um, with a few connections and a few and some research and a little bit of hard work, I, I actually uh, came to work for Customs and Excise. It's gone through many different name changes. It's Canada Board of Services today. And I went in there and uh, was, they were starting up, because I had a science background, they were starting up uh, a customs drug team. This is in the days when narcotics were became, becoming full-blown in the, in the general population. Well, so what year was this? And 1985. Okay. So from 75 to 85 I was home. So 1985, so I started to work there and I, with the, I had like one director and I think there was me, there were two of us just, just starting up. And the, well, what do we need to do to get this, this team working? Well, we have to do a lot of training, a lot of research. So I started doing a lot of research actually on um, methodologies of, of you know, reports that we had and methodologies of how drugs are coming into the country, who's bringing them in, creating profiles and stuff like that. And that was sort of the beginning of developing actually um, intelligence analysis within the Customs Service. So for me, that was just great fun because it was research. The same techniques that you use for scientific research, it doesn't matter. Scientific research or any other research, you know, it's research and putting these things together. And the research would be on what? Uh, police reports? Uh, police reports and customs reports too because mm -hmm. they were, you know, mm -hmm. we, we saw this stuff coming into the country but nothing was organized in a, in a way of, uh, you know, pulling it in together, trying to analyze, well, what is happening? Because you do find out what's happening. Who's, who's involved? How do they do it? How do they hide it? You know, where do they get it? That kind of thing. So then we started, uh, like I said, intelligence analysis and started training our, our officers. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a slow progress, but... So did you then create a basis for how... We those... created a whole division, uh -huh. an intelligence division, eventually, mm -hmm. yeah, of, of functioning. So we had officers in the field, and we had analysts uh, in, in with the documentation. That's That was my end of it. And it grew after a while into a larger organization. It's grown yeah. quite a bit, yeah. But within that, I'm not even sure what question we started with here. <laughs> What you did with your career after okay. you came back. Okay, so I'll just mention one more thing because sort of a highlight in my life. Uh -huh. One of the other things that was happening in about 1987 onwards, um, we had some very horrible child abductions in British Columbia. And um, we also had children being abducted across the border, kidnappings and whatnot. And so we started looking at uh, the fact that um, maybe we should train our officers also in looking out for children. Because if you can, you know, uh, at the, in those days we didn't need passports, you hardly needed any identification to cross borders. It was pretty loose. And uh, so I got involved actually in developing the Missing Children Program for Canada Customs. Really? Yeah. And um, that was uh, because I was, nobody wanted that program, nobody wanted to work with that, everybody else wanted to work with drugs. So, because that was a lot more sexy than working with missing children. So I said, that's fine, I'll take that project on. So I, I, we developed, uh, again, profiles, you had a lot of research, uh, training packages, and uh, I used to go out and train the officers all over British Columbia to, uh, to how to look out for children, what our laws were, what we were allowed to do, what we couldn't do, how we had to uh, marry up with immigration services to be able to detain people because we were only customs at the time. And um, that was very rewarding. That and uh, I attended a lot of conferences that were in you know the NGOs and the nonprofit uh, missing children's organizations in Canada and the United States. Um, it was actually I stayed in that probably for close to ten years. We got lots of awards as a as an organization and even personally uh, for having done that kind of work. And it was very satisfying. It was very satisfying. I imagine so. And we met people also who had lost their children. Because we were have we'd be at conferences and you'd meet people who would tell their terrible stories. Mm -hmm. So that's another part of you know the same working for the federal government in in that organization, but uh, a very different, a very social and humanitarian mm -hmm. kind of project. Mm -hmm.